This video will demonstrate how to implement the map using a binary search tree. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. When I first started using the map, I was really confused with how that could be implemented. Every array I've ever used before used an integer as an index, which is just an offset from the first element in the collection. But a map can use anything for the key. How could that possibly work? This video will demonstrate how we can implement the map using a binary search tree. The best way to explain how to implement the map is with a UML class diagram. And wow, this is a complicated one. So let's take a look at every element one step at a time. First of all, we have a binary node. A binary node is a single node on a binary search tree. Now notice that the binary node has zero, one, two, or three references to itself. Well, not to itself, but to other binary nodes. For an example, if I'm the root node and there's only one node, then I'm gonna have zero references. My parent, my left, and my right are all gonna be the null pointer. However, if I'm in the middle of the binary tree, then I might have a parent node, a left and a right, and that's where three comes from. The binary search tree is gonna have a collection of binary nodes. Now notice this is composition, which means that the binary search tree will create and destroy all instances of the binary nodes. Now the binary node is a nested class within a binary search tree, which makes sense because the binary, the B node only makes sense in the context of the BST. Now the BST is a template class, which means it can handle any data type. Now we also have an iterator to the binary search tree, and this iterator is gonna have zero or one references to a binary node through association. Zero if we're the end iterator and one if we're any other iterator. The map is going to have one binary search tree. And this binary search tree is going to be a private nested class because we don't want the client to know anything about the BST. Therefore, it's a nested class and it's a private one. The map is going to have a key value pair. And this key value are two template variables. Now, notice how the BST only has one template variable. So how can you turn two template variables into one? And the answer is with the pair. So the BST's template is going to be a pair, and the pair is a key value. Therefore, every node in the binary search tree is going to be a pair with both the key and the value. Now, the trick is this. The key is what we're sorting by. So the less than, the double equals operator, um, are all going to only look at the key or the first value of the pair. It will not look at the value because we're only sorting by the key. Now notice we have this weird dot, dot, dot arrow. And what this means is that the map is going to turn the key value into a template, into a T based on the pair. Okay, the map also has an iterator and this iterator is a nested class within map. Now this is a public nested class, which means the client can instantiate a map colon colon iterator. And this iterator has exactly one instance of a BST iterator. So let's take a closer look at the maps iterator. First of all, we're going to look at the BST iterator. And the BST iterator has one or two references to the B node, like we mentioned previously. And now the map iterator is going to have exactly one instance of a BST iterator. And notice how we have a member variable IT, which is a BST iterator. And the map iterator, of course, is a nested class within map. We can learn more about the, how the map is implemented in the map chapter of the C++ Data Structures textbook.